hate driving. I've probably said that phrase at least a thousand times in my life, maybe a thousand and five, give or take. I have avoided going to events and seeing friends solely for the reason that I didn't want to drive to them. And I'm not talking like, oh, I hate driving, it bores me type of hating driving. I'm talking about like your wrists and fingers hurting from gripping the wheel so tight, involatile shaking, full-blown panic attacks in certain situations behind the wheel. And you'd never know that about me unless you've driven with me or I've been a passenger in your car. Driving anxiety is very real. Here I am coming down from a road in the Rocky Mountains heading back down to Denver when it started hailing. I'm back. I'm so scared. <laughs> I pulled off on the side of the highway. I don't know if you can see the hail accumulation. Someone drove past on the left and I couldn't see for like three seconds because of the wave of water. I have 18 miles on this road. I'm trying not to cry. I'm so scared. And I was the only four wheel drive car that pulled off to the side of the road. My car could handle the situation, but I could not. People can suffer from it for a variety of different reasons, but it is truly awful, especially here in the US where driving is such a big part of life, especially if you love travel. We don't have an immaculate train system outside of major cities and buses can't take you to every destination that you wanna see. It was really difficult being away from my car when I was backpacking Europe because a lot of the places that I wanted to go to, there was no public transportation to get there and it's unfortunately really limiting to the things that you can go to. They're usually the things that other people that don't have cars are going to and they're always overcrowded and I hate overcrowded places. So this is my most hated fear of mine right next to public speaking. And when I hate something about myself, I do everything in my power to change it. Traveling really helped me get over a lot of my social anxiety. And since then, I've started working on my driving anxiety. So I've come up with these five steps that you should take that will really help you start getting over that fear. Because at least in my experience, these have helped me. Step one is you're going to sit with yourself and have a conversation with yourself. We want to recognize the cause of this fear because it will help you out in the long run. Have a conversation with yourself like this. Why do you hate driving? Well, it makes me scared. And what exactly are you scared of? Getting into a car accident. Why are you thinking about car accidents? Well, because I was taught everything to do to avoid being in one because of how dangerous they are and how expensive they are. Did you think driving was scary before you were taught the dangers of it? No. Is the anxiety coming from your perspective or was it told to you by somebody other than you? It came from being told the dangers. Can you remember anything positive that you were taught about driving? Mm, not unless you count getting from point A to point B. Then that anxiety is not your own and you are embodying somebody else's driving anxiety. Oh, now here's a quote that I learned about a year ago and it really stuck with me. And it's something that I think about anytime I have any type of anxiety in any situation. Anxiety is a fear of the unknown, a fear of something that hasn't happened yet. I am afraid of something that I have no actual proof will ever happen. Am I living in the future? No, I'm living in the present and I'll always be living in the present. So why am I so afraid of something that doesn't even exist? Start with slowly trying to retrain your brain and realize what anxiety is. Because now that you know what anxiety is and it's actual definition, the fear of the unknown, the fear of something that hasn't happened yet, you can then take that and realize that when you are having these anxiety filled feelings, where they're coming from. Step two, you're probably not gonna like very much. I know I didn't, but once you hear step two, the rest of the steps coincide with it. So don't roll your eyes and click the back button. It is the most important step. In professional terms, it's called immersion therapy. But in layman's terms, you're gonna need to plan a road trip. I saw that eye roll. Your brain is a muscle. And just like any other muscle, you can train your brain. The first time you get on a bike, you're most likely going to fall off because you, your body and your mind does not know how to balance on this bike yet. It's never had to do the physical motions and it's completely clueless. But if you couldn't train your muscles to figure out how to do it, no one would ever know how to ride a bike. And how does one eventually come to riding a bike? You have to keep doing it over and over and over and then your brain will understand, oh, okay, this is what I do to ride the bike. 
I know what you're thinking, Lindsay, I, I can't even drive 10 minutes down the street. How am I supposed to go and take a road trip? By making sure you are fully prepared to do so before you take off. So step three is making the plan. You're not just gonna get on the road and blindly drive to another state. Some people can do that, and those people don't have driving anxiety. That's why we're here. Knowing the exact route that you're taking before you go will really help lower that driving anxiety because it gets rid of a little bit of the fear of the unknown. You will see your route in front of you, you will know the turns that you need to take, you'll know which streets you're going down, what highways you're taking, what back roads you're taking, what cities you're driving through, you will know everything so there's no surprise. Let's say you plan out a five day road trip to help you get over your driving anxiety. Because if you're here watching this video, you do wanna take the steps that are necessary to get over that fear. So while planning out your route, we're going to start small and work our way up. For example, I'm on day five of my road trip right now, of eight. On day one, I drove three hours. On day two, I drove four hours. Day three, I drove five hours. Four, I also drove four hours. And today, I drove six hours. And honestly, the six hours that I drove today went by faster than the first three hours on day one of my road trip. Uh, why? Because the more I do it, the less scary it is. My brain is starting to recognize it as a part of my everyday routine of getting up and driving, even though I won't be doing this for the rest of my life. I'm training my brain that that could very well be a possibility. So when planning your route, don't just plan one route, plan an alternative route as well. If you're feeling a little more anxious that day, you could click the avoid highways button on Google Maps and usually those roads won't be as crowded or busy and intense as the highways. But be careful when doing that because they could also lead you through a major city. I even like to go as far as putting on the satellite option on Google Maps so I can scroll in and see are there a lot of cars on this road right now? Good to know beforehand. And when you really learn about all the little parts of your route, it really does ease your mind more because there's not as much to be unexpected. Okay, so you've planned out your route. Now step four is you're going to prepare your car. Not as simple as just getting in your car and driving because we have anxiety. So we're gonna take a few extra steps to help ease that some more. So what is going to make us feel better? I personally am terrified the most of trucks. They're, they're so scary to me. Especially when I was in my little Honda Accord and I just felt like an ant compared to the mammoth next to me. So when picking out a new car, I decided to get a bigger car, a Honda CRV. That also has a bunch of safety features. Like it will break if somebody cuts me off too closely and I don't, I, I don't stop in time, it will stop for me. And I love that, it makes me feel a lot safer. So if you have the means to, it's really good to start in a car where you feel the most safe in. I also bought a front and rear dash cam uh, in case I do get into a car accident, at least nobody can try and lie uh, to get like an insurance scam or whatever. I know that I would be fully covered. I'm, I highly doubt I'm gonna cause an accident with how safe I drive, but I'm more scared of the other people on the road than actually driving itself. Because honestly, I wouldn't have any driving anxiety if I was the only person on earth. It would be fun then. And I like to keep eye drops in my car to use before I start driving because put those eye drops in and I instantly feel more awake and more alert and I feel like I could just see more of everything around me. It's just all more clear. And I also have lotion too and I put lotion on my face before I start driving so it, the, the cold really helps with anxiety because heat is not good for anxiety at all. When you start to have a panic attack you start to get really hot and then you could eventually pass out if you don't get better. So I like to put cool lotion on my face, also helps me feel more awake and put the air conditioning on or have the window open, you know, if it's not winter and all of those things will really help. Another good thing to do would be make a playlist with a bunch of confident boosting songs, songs that you know the words to and can sing along to because music really can affect your mood. And if you're listening to like really good empowering songs, you're going to be embodying that mindset a lot more than if you were listening to, I don't know, random things on the radio and people talking about things that you don't care about. So you want to set up your car to be in your element, where you feel the best, how you feel the least anxious, how you would just in your everyday life in general. And step five is knowing exactly what to avoid when you're on the road so you can be as safe as possible. Never drive close behind pickup trucks that have things in the back of like an open bed. Because I have watched personally on multiple occasions things just fly out of the back of those, hit other cars, crash down on the highway, I've watched it so many times and that's just my perspective and you know that happens a lot more than just what I have seen. So to avoid anything like that happening, don't drive behind 
any type of pickup truck that has something in the back, even if it looks like it's securely tied down. I don't trust it. Never pass big trucks when going around a curve. That's something that terrifies me to do. So I just, I just don't do it. I just wait for a straightaway because for trucks, it's not as easy for them to correct their, their turns. I don't really know how to put this in words, but if they start to slide a little bit to the left, it's a lot more dramatic for them to whip back and get back into their lane as opposed to like regular cars. And I have noticed that the time where they are more likely to shift into either a different lane or into the shoulder would be going around those turns. So just avoid passing them when you're going around one of those, feel a lot safer. Honestly, I feel like passing trucks gives me the most anxiety just in general. I, I would grip the wheel so tight and just like, breathe in really deep and then let it out after I pass the truck. So my brain is a little distracted with the breathing and I'm not just dying because I just feel like dying when I do that. And the more you drive, the more you'll be able to predict the movements of the cars around you. Like I will not merge into a middle lane from a right lane if there's a car parallel to me in the left lane because they could decide that they want to move over at any minute and then I would pretty much be in their blind spot and if we merge into the same lane at the same time, That'd be really bad. So I'm always trying to predict and anticipate what all the cars around me can do. And this is something that really comes with experience. The more you drive, the more you'll see similar situations, the more you'll be able to predict them and then learn what to avoid. I also avoid driving during traffic hour. So usually early in the morning when everyone's going to work and when everybody's come home for work. I will usually plan out events and my routes based off of traffic times, which can be inconvenient, but helps me feel better in the long run. You can go on Google Maps and you can see live traffic maps. And if you have a road trip planned, look at your route a few days beforehand and check the traffic throughout the day to see what time would be the best for you to drive during that route. If it's really red at three o'clock, if all the lines are red, don't go at three o'clock, go earlier, go after. Check for the entire day, write it down if you need to. But the more planning you do before you go, the safer you'll feel. If you have good vision, it would be best to drive at night to begin with because between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. that's when the least amount of cars are on the road. But uh, if you have like astigmatism where like the light kind of just stretches out, it's, it's not the best to do that. I can't drive at night because of that, so it kind of sucks. But when I was younger and did have better vision, it was definitely the least anxious time of the day to drive was in the middle of the night. So you recognize where your fear is coming from. You've decided that you want to get over it. You have made a plan, you have fully prepared your car and yourself, and you know what to avoid. The only thing left to do is to get out there and start building up a tolerance against that fear. And trust me, I know how hard it is. After my car shut down while driving up a mountain road in the middle of the highway, and I had to glide to the side of the road around a curve where all these trucks are flying past me, and I was just panicking, do you think I ever wanted to get back on the road again? No, <laughs> absolutely not. But if I didn't, and if I just stayed in my house every day after that, I never would have saw the world's largest rocking chair today. I never would have seen so many things that I've seen on this road trip and past road trips, and just in general, if I stopped driving. You have to push yourself to get the things that you want. They're not just going to fall into your lap and no day is going to feel easier than any other day. If you truly wanna get over your driving anxiety, following these five steps is a great start, but the rest can only come from you and your experience. And I truly believe in all of you. Now get out there, go on a road trip and go see the world. If you have any more tips that would help people in this exact situation, please leave them in a comment down below and I will catch y'all on the next one.